So I have with me now Mr. Bart Carnelison, Partner Energy Resources and Industrials Leader at Deloitte. Welcome to this interview. Welcome to ADIPEC. Thank you very much. This session, we just saw the blurred line between oil, gas, and utilities, partners or industry competitors. Which one it is? No, they're actually both. On the one hand, you could see them as competitors, but we have to be clear. There is such a transition needed in our energy system. We need to collaborate. So one of the things you see, for example, in Adipec, a lot of people have talked about hydrogen. To actually make hydrogen work, we need to set up innovation hubs. We need to collaborate. Because we come in from oil and gas, and that's a sector that's basically been around for a century. And we're trying in a really, really short time to build up a whole new ecosystem, a new supply chain, new production, distribution, storage. All of that will need a tremendous amount of investment. And the only way to do that is to actually collaborate. And we see that. If you look at some of the partnerships in, for example, in hydrogen in Europe, you actually see power utility companies, several oil companies, even steel manufacturers that are going to use the product. They're all part of the consortium. So I see a future that is far more about collaboration than about competition. Speaking about energy transition, is it a revolution or an evolution? Now, any change takes time, especially when you talk about such a complex system like energy. It's, I talked about oil and gas, I said it took about 100 years. If you look at the, even the power utility system, it has taken decades to build up. We can't just overnight switch it and go from one source, oil and gas, to fully renewables. It will take time. And important with that is, is also electrification only covers about 40, 45% of energy demand. We still need to find solutions, and hydrogen is one of them, for the other 55%. There are hard to abate sectors, like aviation, like shipping, like road freight, construction, chemicals, they need oil and gas, and the world needs those sectors. As a result, it's an evolution and not a revolution. Also, that's the dilemma between high ambitions and reality that we are facing now. Let's talk a bit about uh, reinvestment or investment. There's a huge challenge in the industry about the lack of investments. Where should the priority be in this sector? Now, first of all, a lot of investment is needed. On the one hand, in oil and gas, because we still need about 500 to 550 billion a year to fulfill the demand for oil and gas. And let's be clear, we have that demand. And we've seen it in the UK, when there's not enough supply of energy, prices skyrocket and people actually get into real trouble. At the same point in time, we need investments in renewables. We need more of it. Because at the moment, it's about 10% of the oil and 10% of the investments of oil and gas companies is in renewable projects. We need to do better. So one of the questions we have, and, and that's a challenge for shareholders, what we see a lot of the oil and gas companies with the tremendous profits they make at the moment, they see a lot of that using for share buybacks, for dividend payouts, but they're not necessarily investing it back into the business. And part of that is, is because investments are difficult because the climate is very unpredictable. So how can you invest for the next 10, 20 years in an oil and gas project if you don't know how you're going to be treated by the market? Will you still be able to sell your product in five to 10 years? You, can't, you can only make your business case if we have some degree of predictability. And as a result, we're coming back to the evolution force of revolution. It needs to be clear to society that things take time and we should also allow companies and society as a whole to adapt itself and take that time. 